I'm Marina Kim and you're watching the news from Kazakhstan. A meeting of the public committee to discuss the burning issue of legalizing land plots in the Alatau and Turk Sub districts took place in the office of the ruling party Nuratan on Thursday. The following report from Almaty has more. Officials, representatives of the political party Azad and illegal developers gathered together for a public council to discuss the protracted procedure of issuing land ownership documents to the residents of the Alatau district. However, any attempt at constructive dialogue failed and soon the discussion turned into shouting session, despite the tries of officials to explain the current situation. These lands became a part of the Almaty city at the president's decree signed on April 29, 1998. If we look through archives, the detailed plan project was developed back then and it was passed to the city as well. These land lots were not subject to allocation. The issue of unauthorized construction on the territories of Saki boroughs of the Latau district was also raised. About 100 illegal shacks were built on the territory of the archaeological site. According to local historians and archaeologists, these memorials have long been looted and are no longer of great value to researchers. Nevertheless, Deputy Mayor Sereksei Dumanov demands not to desecrate the monuments. Saki boroughs are sacred and people should talk about it with mullahs first. Do not angry the people and God. People also wanted to know why officials and businessmen can easily obtain permits for the development and legalization of land in the Alatau district, while regular citizens have to wait for almost a decade and still have no definite solution. Rizada Jakubek, the defender of local residents, threatened officials with new bigger rallies if the issue will not be solved soon. I want to tell officials that maybe we had just 23 people before, thus we could not do anything substantial. But now we are going to unite with other groups and then you will see our real power. It seemed that the threats actually worked, as the head of the land department, Konishbek Kashkibayev, promised to deal with the problem. He, however, did not specify when. The patience of shared construction interest holders has also, also reached a boiling point when they literally stormed the Astana office of Nuratan on Thursday. A year ago, the party's deputy chairman Darhan Kalitaev promised to solve their problems. Then the official left his position and failed to act on his words. Now the interest holders demand the leader of the nation to solve the issue. About 100 shared construction interest holders came to the Astana's office of Nuratan, asking the ruling party to help them find out when, if ever, they will see their housing. Desperate people demanded a meeting with the party's leader Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, or at least with his deputy Nurlan Nigmatulin. All courts and prosecutors are corrupted. I am a citizen of my country. The party leaders, however, did not show up to talk to the people who had to settle for MPI Gul Salavyova and the chairman of the party's control committee, Boran Rehimbekov. In an hour, it became clear that no dialogue is possible in current format and the decision was made to split people into groups so that everyone will be heard. I can tell you that the problems of interest holders and mortgage borrowers are solved by 90 percent. The assumption that some housing was taken away from someone is exaggerated. These issues must be dealt with through constructive talks. The pickets of the deceived people are gaining momentum as mortgage borrowers join the protesting interest holders in Astana. The demands to the state toughen while the number of outraged people grows. Many of them now have to rent apartment. The 70-year-old Alexandra Bilaus believes she lost her 25-year-old son because of his depression caused by housing problems. He could not afford another apartment. In the end, he could not take it any longer and died on December 5th. During the last elections, members of the ruling party Nuratan promised to deal with the problems of every Kazakh citizen individually. But this never happened, say interest holders. Now they demand to cancel the government's decree, according to which interest holders who have more than one apartment will lose the second property. So far, only a working group was created within the parliament to deal with the issue. Late at night on May 6, the Administrative Court of Almaty passed the sentence to the leader of the unregistered party Alga Vladimir Kozlov, sentencing him to 15 days in jail for a violation he did not actually commit. The judge spent six hours finding how exactly Kozlov managed to organize a May Day rally while being inside the party office. Judge Utigena of the Almaty City Court sentenced the oppositionist Vladimir Kozlov to 15 days in jail after a five-hour interrogation session. Apparently, the leader of the unregistered party Alga is guilty of not preventing disorders and learning from his prior mistakes. You initially stated that you were preparing for provocation, that you deliberately did nothing. The judge's obvious discontent somehow spilled over to the press, and the final verdict was announced behind the closed doors. According to Kozlov, Utigenova also ignored all arguments of the activist attorneys. I am dissatisfied with the judge in general and her qualification in particular. She obviously executes someone's order. 
The owner judge of Kazakhstan, Utigen Ikhsanov, is surprised by the process. He says that Kozlov's arrest was conducted with the violation of constitution and the trial itself was based on presumption of guilt. As a result, it was simply impossible to prove something otherwise. They basically built the entire trial around a guess, saying that since Kozlov was near the office of the political party at that time, then he probably also organized the rally. This is illegal. Independent lawyers note another interesting detail. Sentences are rarely made this late at night, while this is already second such violation in relation to Kozlov. I believe it is illegal to pass sentences late at night. According to the law, only urgent investigative actions such as suspects, detention or inspection of a crime scene can be held late at night. Can I go now? <laughs> Lawyers say that Kozlov's attorney must appeal the decision of Judge Utigenova as there are enough questions to its objectivity. They also recommend doing this during the established working hours, as according to law, it is prohibited to pass sentences after 6 p.m. The court dismissed the appeal of the Talmas movement lawyers concerning the 15-day sentence to Ainur Kurmanov. For the first time, he was allowed to personally participate in the trial and act as his own attorney. Ainur Kurmanov, arrested on April 27 for the participation in the rally next to the offices of Timir Bank, demands to re-watch the video of the event. The first jurisdiction court ignored the request to restore the true picture of what was happening. The new attempt to appeal against the accusations has failed as well. The prosecutor and judge once again refused to watch the video of the rally. The resolution of the specialized inter-district court of Almaty made on April 27, 2010 in respect of Ainur Kurmanov will be left unchanged while the defendant's complaint dismissed. The decision is not subject to appeals but may be objected by the prosecutor in the established by the Administrative Offenses Code order. Officials responsible for the break of the dam at the Leili Reservoir in East Kazakhstan have been punished. The emergency happened a week ago and while nearly 200 houses, a hospital and a kindergarten were flooded, no casualties were reported. Due to poor control which led to the break of the dam, the deputy head of the Kokpekti district as well as heads of utilities and architecture departments received disciplinary punishments. The director of the settlement's communal services was fired, while the administration head of the village Samarskaya was spared so far, as he is currently in a hospital with a heart attack. The special commission and law enforcement agents are still working in the village at the moment. Since this was a man-made construction, the situation with the break will be investigated by the law enforcement authorities. They will find out whether the emergency could have been avoided. The founders of the currently blocked internet forum Center Tiajesti appealed to the Almaty City Court to contesting the decision of the Interdistrict Economic Court, which rendered the most popular web resource in Kaznet inaccessible for already three weeks. Moreover, the forum's co-owners appealed to the Communications and Information Ministry, which still appears to be on the fence about the matter. The entire dispute revolves around the domain name of Center Tiajesti. Rejana Sabayev, the former companion of the forum founder Dmitry Zimin, contested the right to the forum ownership. Over the last two years, Sabayev was working on advertising matters, for which Zimin and Sabayev established New Line Media Limited, thus making Sabayev the holder of the domain leasing rights on a parity basis. The contract was signed for two years up to 2007. The hearing of the complaint will be held in mid-May. According to the forum administrator, the resource is available on the backup domain, but has already lost up to 40% of the previous audience. Prior to the blocking, as of April 2006, online counters registered up to 600,000 original clicks. According to the media law, which views the Internet resource as a mass media, its operation can only be stopped through the owners of court's decision.